Hi there, everybody. Happy 4th of July. I'm John Luck with Jeff Fowler. We are coming to you from the center of Bridgewater here in Central Square. And we are just a few minutes away from getting this parade off and running. Jeff, you're the you're on the 4th of July committee. You gave us a heads up. We're probably about eh, five minutes or so away from seeing the first fire trucks coming through. We are, yeah. Another uh, smooth beginning to our parade. It's off and running. we got a great crowd here. Uh, this morning, looks like the weather's holding out. We're a lot drier than we were last year, so we'll take it. You said this last year. I did, and but I mean it this year. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. So if you if you are watching us live on YouTube, let's give you a layout of the day. Obviously, we're here to do the parade. Now, if you're around the Bridgewater area from now until, I believe, 3 o'clock over mm -hmm. at Boyden Quad, there's the Arts and Music Festival. A lot of great um, artists taking part in that and uh, music acts as well and great food. So that goes on until 3 o'clock at Bridgewater State University's Boyden Quad. Then at Legion Field, Jeff, we're going to party with about 10,000 people. We are. we got a great day uh, planned out here. All day, come on down. It's all family fun. We've got, as you mentioned, the Arts Festival going on right now. As a matter of fact, we have vendors who have come in from Maine. We have vendors who have come in from Connecticut. Uh, lots of great variety. Noritar does an amazing job with that every year. Uh, we also that, That's at Bridgewater State right at Boyden Quad. We've got the parade going now. We have our carnival that starts at 4 p.m. down at Legion Field. A lot of kiddie rides down there. If you want to beat the lines, if you want to beat the crowds, head right down there. At 4 p.m., as you mentioned, we'll have the music going too. And uh, then, of course, the fireworks at 9.30. And everything is going on. Uh, rain or shine, doesn't matter. There's talk, rumors of maybe a shower. We're, we're going to roll with it, but come on down. You know, bring a poncho if you want to and keep the rain away. If people bring ponchos, it won't rain. That's how it works. Yeah, you're in a gazebo, so you can say that. There you go. But one thing, we always hear this from people, oh, this is a town event, so the town pays for it. We go through this every year. It is a town event, but the town doesn't pay for it. This is all fundraising money here, and this is a group of seven people leading the charge. It is. So the town's people support this amazingly. The town's businesses support this. We have great partnerships with police, fire, highway, uh, but you're right, this is not a town department. Uh, this is not an official town activity, um, which is okay. I mean, we, we're very uh, appreciative that this is a privately funded event. Uh, it actually is a benefit to the community that it is, and we enjoy it every year. Uh, we enjoy the fundraising events too. We've had an amazing partnership this year with Barrett's. I know we're gonna talk about that a little bit, but Mike Barrett and his family have uh, been tremendous supporters. But all the businesses that have, that have reached out and all of our residents, and you know, it, it sounds cliche, but literally, John, every dollar, every quarter, uh, it really adds up. Uh, we've had people say, you know, I can only afford $5. I said, well, you and, you know, 100 other people afforded $5, and that was a $500 donation. And so, you know, every dollar really does help. And hypothetically, you know, if you do quick math, I'm class of BR 2008, so my math kind of sketchy. But it, let's say there's 10,000 people at Legion Field tonight. They all throw a $5 bill in there. Your fireworks are basically for paid yep. for, right? Yep. Pays for the entire event. Yep. And the great yep. thing about today is, listen, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. We don't need to get into it. But today is just a day to have fun. And I think that's a great thing. Uh, I mean, we're looking down here at Central Square. Usually we're used to seeing cars coming through here at 10, 12 in the morning. But we look down, there's people about four or five rows deep, which is cool to see. Yeah, the great part of today, you know, is we we have the ability to have debates. We have the ability to be, uh, you know, passionate about what we believe in. And we have the ability to come together and, and have conversations and have agreements and disagreements. And at the end of the day, who cares? Because we're all American. We're all Bridgewater. And uh, we're all uh, each other's neighbors and friends. And yes, so, so the beauty of this event, the tradition goes on for many years. I can remember... Uh, many years ago, having town meetings in June and having them make very difficult decisions, budgetary decisions, and then come out, you know, four days later and come together and, and, and have a wonderful event and celebration. And, and that's really what today is all about. And we're going to see floats here. We're going to see fire trucks coming through here. We're going to see police officers coming through here. We're going to see businesses, but we're also going to see great causes as well. I believe uh, Cash Strong has a float coming through here, the uh, Seven Line Project with a bunch of Jeeps coming through here. So a little bit of everything here in this place. It is, and it's, it's great for people to see what opportunities are out there. So, you know, if you are looking for volunteer opportunities, if you're looking for uh, groups and causes to join, you'll be seeing them out here today. And you're right, John, that's what it's about. It's about community. It's about coming together. It's about helping us out. 
because that, at the end of the day, that's what makes all of us strong. So again, we're just waiting for the fire trucks to come through here, but uh, I mean, I'm looking up and down the sidewalks here. We got a little bit of everything. We got some Uncle Sam hats. I remember we last do. year we had some uh, squid hats, I believe. That we do, yeah. You know, and we get, and and it's a great. The great thing I see is we see folks from ages, you know, eight to eighty. You know, it's it's a it's a large group here, and uh, you know they're all together and, and all sharing the the event, and they're all ready to go here and have some fun, which is which is a great idea. And I do want to before we get too far here. Thank our wonderful committee who uh, puts in an amazing effort every year. And so Lisa Bazell Curley, Scott Curley, Keith Buell, Lauren Harrington, Sarah Cashman, Nancy Wood, Robin Murray, and I'm hoping I'm not forgetting any names. We have so much support all year long. You know, we do have a small committee, but we have a wonderful town, and, and that's the big part. We have folks who do stuff behind the scenes who really, you know, don't want any recognition, don't want to be named. They just want to be a part of the event. And it goes to show, you know, what Bridgewater is all about. It has been for a long years. We have people who are coming today, visiting from out of state, who come to this town because they know that Bridgewater is the place to be on the 4th of July. And even if you haven't made donations, if you had dinner at Barrett's any Monday, uh, from uh, Patriot's Day right on through last Monday, you supported us. Uh, if you go to the carnival tonight and you buy tickets for the rides, you've supported us. If you go to any of the food vendors, you've supported us. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of ways to do it, and uh, it, 100% of this money all goes right back to the community and goes back to today's event, and any money that we have left over is carried over to next year, and we want to be able to do that to make sure we're able to carry this for many years to come. So if you buy a thing of fried dough tonight or two things of fried dough tonight, yep. then you're supporting you're the You're supporting the event, exactly. Yeah, so there's many ways to do it. All of the vendors who are here with us, they give back to us. Many of the restaurants in town, we've had events at Black Hat Brew Works. We've had events at Greyhound. Um, we've had events in the past with Emma's. I mean, a lot of your businesses, and they've all been a great support. You hear in the background the Bridgewater and Tiffinal Brass Society, who is also a part of this event. They've been supported by uh, many folks in the town. They've been supported by the uh, Cultural Council. So they've also helped us, uh, which is great. And a lot of our local churches, we have First Parish, who is uh, selling food today and, and, you know, doing fundraisers. We have Central Square Congregational, who's opened their doors for folks if they need to use the restroom or just take a break from the weather, uh, you know, which is very nice. And many folks have opened up their doors and have embraced this event. And a lot of folks have taken time away from their families today, too, to be here and to, uh, to work and volunteer, and we really appreciate that. I have to give a shout-out to the CERT team as well, because every year uh, these folks are here. They give their time, and you know, every year we can count on them to help out with public safety issues, which is huge. And people are watching this. We're going to be here every year, especially during the parade, but let's say people are watching this and they know of the fireworks, they want to help out with the fireworks. The committee is always looking for new members, right? We are, and, and you know, you can give as much time as you have. Uh, you can, we do have some meetings, but you can also just do stuff on your own time. And sometimes it's as easy as passing out a flyer or setting up a sign or just helping with our social media, getting the word out there. Uh, most people in Bridgewater know what's going on, but we also have friends from surrounding communities who, you know, want to be a part of this, which is great. It's great that Bridgewater can showcase its town open up the doors to everybody and, and really show what we're all about. And you mentioned surrounding towns. I was looking at the uh, fire department, which is just behind our production truck, and we had fire trucks from Rainham, West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, um, Randolph, I believe. There's fire truck, there's fire engines from everywhere, which is and cool And it's to see. a great way for them to build up their camaraderie as well, you know, bring in their friends. These are folks who may work uh, mutual aid. They may be involved in some, you know, events later on that they have to work together so this is a great way today for them to all come bring their families everybody kind of hang out with each other have some fun at a nice event you know i mean we count on these folks for being there when we need them and sometimes it's not so great events so it's, this is a great opportunity today to have them come here and really be a part of some fun and enjoy themselves and uh, we also have to give a shout out to our volunteers with the btv team who you know are always there for the town and the community and we get some uh, new volunteers today helping us out as well and, and that's awesome. So I have to say I'm pretty surprised you're here for the second straight year. I, I thought after last year 
you know, working for the 4th of July, you'd find your way into the 4th of July Corvette. I'm pretty impressed you showed up out here. The kind of it's, uh, it's, it's tough having so many, re so many responsibilities, but, you know, this is, a, this is great because I can be here with you all and kind of keep an eye on the parade as well, run back and forth, and after a few frozen hot chocolates, I probably could use some laps running around the town, so uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good benefit. You made good time coming from uh, Harrington to here. Sure did, sure did. Again, if people want to take part in the 4th of July and the fundraising effort, there is a Facebook page, there is a website as well if they want to go ahead and donate while they're watching us on YouTube Live or if they're watching us on replay on BTV. There is, and we have two websites, and we, we do link back and forth, but we have bridgewaterfourth.com, which is all about our arts and music festival, which Nora Tarr does an amazing job with that every year. You know, she'll be down there at the quad, as we mentioned, until mid-afternoon. And then we have bridgewatermafourth.com, which will give the information on the parade and fireworks. We're all part of a, a big team. It's just uh, it's more of a financial issue. That's why you see two sites. That's all taxes and other stuff that nobody cares about. But it's all part of one great event in our town, and, and we're really excited to have it and be able to bring it to everybody. And again, if people ha aren't familiar with the Bridgewater fireworks, this is one of the best fireworks displays here in Massachusetts. You have the Pops, you have Plymouth, you have Bridgewater. I mean, when you're up there with the likes of Boston and Plymouth. That's pretty impressive, and it's a long fireworks show as well. It is. It's uh, you know we've had we've been partners with Atlas Pyro for many years, and they do an amazing job. And the nice thing with Bridgewater is you can get the Boston feel without dealing with the Boston traffic. And you might sit in traffic, you know, 15, 20 minutes here. Hopefully that's as long as you're at, versus sitting on 93 for a couple hours. So this is a much better option. I uh, hear sirens not too far away, so I think we're getting close. So I'm just going to get out of the way just in case. Okay. Plus, we can claim our spot and give people the chance to move. I mean, we're the size of four Uncle Sam's together. We're, we're our float, I think. We're the BTV float, John. That's... I, I've said the closest I came to a parade float was the uh, Christmas festival in Brockton. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, we'll continue to enjoy the sounds of the Antiphonal Brass Society right there off to the distance. It's also a nice mix when you have a little, uh, a little Antiphonal Brass and a little siren action and kind of mix it all together. And in a minute here, folks aren't going to be able to hear us, and that's okay because they're going to hear a bunch of sirens, and we will Sometimes pass good the thing. stage over. They are. Once again, you're watching live coverage here on YouTube of the Bridgewater 4th of July Parade. If you're around the Bridgewater area, you can come on down to Bridgewater State until about 3 o'clock, Arts and Music Festival, and that Legion Field starting at 4 o'clock, Carnival, fireworks, great food, a little something for everyone coming up later on here today. You'll be happy to know, John, I've already run into my Tiki Bar dealer, so we'll be all set for tonight. Wheeling and dealing like a true Uncle right. Sam. Payola. That's so what DJs are all about, Chuck. We're going to step aside for just a little bit as we have a bunch of fire trucks coming through. Enjoy the start of the parade, everyone. Thank <laughs> you. 
a whole bunch of fire trucks going through. I think we still have maybe half our hearing after those sirens. Very impressive fleet coming through, though. I noticed some uh, some new trucks this year. Awesome as our veterans come by. Always great to see our veterans council. Also our our new leader this year with the Bridgewater VFW. Veterans Council car being driven by uh, Luigi Primavera. And how about Tony Esposito on camera as well? Always part of the team. And Tony's been here longer than we have, John. He's a BTV staple. Also a member of the board of directors, so yes. responsible for you. So if you keep saying he's here for too long. You know. <laughs> That's true. That's very good. God bless anybody who's been responsible for me and is still here. That's a test of it for sure. So as we go through the floats here, we're going to have uh, Tony tag along with us. So if we see a float and we have anyone coming out on a float, we'll uh, kind of tag along here. It's a plan. We should have a... We, I will say this is one of the larger parades we have this year. We've had a great turnout, a lot of uh, some late entries who have come in, and we appreciate them for sure. And we're getting some more reputation for our VFW here coming down the route. Definitely one of those days to celebrate, and here comes your group of uh, people, Jeff. Our fearless leaders from the Bridgewater 4th of July Committee with our shiny new banner this year. That looks nice. From Bridgewater Print Copy, it looks like. And the true Mr. Bridgewater, Keith Buell, right there in the center. Our Freedom Jeep, one of these staples. And they got Uncle Sam in the back seat. I love it. You know, one thing we have cool there, if people have seen our t-shirts this year, John, they've noticed we have a little red truck on there, kind of symbolic of the old country town vision. And uh, so we had a, a friend reach out to us who happened to own a little red truck, an antique red truck, and they offered to drive it in the parade. So this truck looks almost exactly like the truck that you'll see on the 4th of July t-shirts today, which was kind of a great addition. Fully restored antique truck, by the way. The cool thing about the shirts every year is these are submissions, so people from Bridgewater and around Bridgewater. Will they are, end yes. Up. We have never had a commercially designed t shirt. This has always been done uh, by folks in town, by uh, children in the school system. Uh, same goes for our national anthem performance tonight at the gazebo and also some patriotic music before that. We have folks who have offered their time free of charge, uh, always, usually town residents. Uh, who really help us out, and that's great. And another example of community support. So I do see the town council, so I'm going to dart out here in the middle of a parade, which is always a good thing to do. I'll hop out here with uh, Tony Esposito. Happy 4th, Tony. So as you can see here, we do have the council coming through, led by uh, Susie Robinson, Kevin Perry. We got Mark Lindy, Sonia Striggles, Fred Chase as well. A so great I'm gonna, turn of So I'm going to do a little walk and talk, hopefully, All and see right. if I don't fall into a All pothole. Right. Don't fall down. Let's talk with uh, Councillor Lindy here. Sure. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th. How are you? So as a councillor, I'd imagine it's pretty cool to walk down here and see people five Happy or six fourth. rows deep. Oh, it's, an, it's incredible. This is the best day in town. All right, well, enjoy happy the rest fourth. of the parade Good around, and happy 4th. We'll see you later. Next up, we have the BCCR. We had uh, Chris Del Monte, the police chief, right behind us, and the Mandela Washington Fellowship coming down here now. And Jeff, we said this is a cool day for everyone, and especially the parade participants coming through here. And if they're not from the Bridgewater area, it gives them a true appreciation for the spirit Bridgewater has. It sure does. It's great to bring all of our communities together and all of our neighbors, our scouts here walking by us right now. I know they're very excited to be a part of this as well. And look at our kids over here getting ready for some candy coming their way. A great parade tradition. I thought that wasn't allowed for a while in the parade. Well, you can you can walk and toss. You just can't throw off the floats. We don't want to get anybody injured. But See, walking and tossing is totally fine. And walking and talking. That's good, too. 
What we want to know is, are they going to share any candy with Uncle Sam? I don't think so. I don't think Uncle Sam needs any more candy. Their space. Pack 33, or 23 rather, coming in from West Bridgewater. I don't want to block the view, John. Uncle Sam's going to take a knee. Actually, I probably shouldn't take a knee, John. That might be, that might be thought it is bad. So, And if I take two knees, I'm never going to get back up. So I'll just stand right here. Got the How about it for our cheerleaders and Bridgewater girls softball as well coming right behind them? They actually have a softball tournament coming up in August. Where they'll have teams from all around the area coming in here. Big thanks to Simonelli and Lynch's and all of our tow truck drivers who have come today and brought their flatbeds for us, donating their time and allowing us to have these great floats as well. And the water guns too. I appreciate a good water gun today. What's the forecast looking like tonight there, Uncle Sam? Well, you know, it's actually not a bad forecast at all. There's a little bit of cloudiness, but mainly uh, upper, you know, high level clouds, so they should not bother our fireworks. There's an outside chance of a shower or two, but honestly, any organized rain looks like it'll be well after midnight. So if we get lucky, we won't see anything. If you do see something, you know, 10, 15 minutes, not a big deal. Here comes the road to kindergarten, led by the efforts of uh, parents of George Mitchell Elementary School. Scared to say this, the class of uh, 2037. If that doesn't make you feel old, I'm not sure what will. Well, we thought this, what, 12 years ago or something like that? That's we true. thought, oh, yeah. well, the class of 2024, that's so far away. And it's always important for kids to kind of have an idea of their classmates before they get in the classroom. A lot of anxiety, I'd imagine, for students before that first day of school. This has been something that's been going on for years, the uh, Road to Kindergarten program. Not a bad introduction. You have the 4th of July parade in the past. I know they've had days at Bridgewater State University hanging out with the football team and a mm -hmm. uh, little field day there that the football team and the school kids enjoy. And they are still the Mitchell Monsters, which is great to see. Keeping up a great tradition here in Bridgewater. Coming through here with a strong four flow performance. And we have quite a bit of students here, John. This is a great to see. Now remember this in 12 years when we're doing graduation, that's the class is about 500 yes, students. Yes, that's we'll go back to this day and remember <laughs> the four floats. I'll get my water now. Next up, we have America's Little Angels Preschool. Very nice. Very nice patriotic float there. One of our committee members, Scott Curley, walking aside. And I believe they're actually going to be performing a little bit later yes, on tonight at the will. fireworks. Part of our entertainment this evening. And the aforementioned Corvette that uh, a couple years ago you rode in, but this year. Got some different folks riding oh, in it. We're tag teaming. It's a nice looking vet, part of our classic cars coming forward and also our Jeeps, which again, as we mentioned at the top, a wonderful cause. These folks do some amazing things all year long. They do parades, they do fundraisers, uh, they go to folks' houses, they cheer people up. Again, these are all volunteers who are here and give their time and raise money and uh, have a lot of fun too. There's some great camaraderie, which is uh, awesome to see. I mentioned the uh, Cash Strong group that's going to be coming through here, I believe, in this parade. The Jeeps actually had an effort riding right by uh, Cash's house. They which did, is... raising some money and uh, raising some spirits as well, which was great to see. You'll see a lot of these Jeeps also are decorated. They've got lights, they've got uh, patriotic decorations. They 
They put a lot of time into their vehicles, and it's even got awesome snowman. See. Yes, they do. Yeah. Wouldn't mind some snow today. Remember that in six months. And I think a Jeep is probably the perfect summer vehicle. I agree. You got wind coming from the top, the sides. Again, our awesome CERT team helping us out today, keeping our parade routes safe, and also our floats moving, which is important. Yeah, it's a, I don't want to call it a tough route, but a unique route when you take that turn from, I believe it's Dean Street to Worcester Street. I was talking with one of the uh, people that's going to be on a float coming up here, and they said that that can be a dicey turn. You really have to measure that turn perfect. And there's no turning back once you, once you start it. Literally. <laughs> OM Obedience coming through, one of our supporters. Great dog training program. I have to imagine a pretty cool experience for the kids uh, riding through here. Probably a better turnout than the uh, Florida Panthers parade. Ah, the one day of the year you can do this safely. Right through the town. Yeah, usually this is pretty quick for traffic coming through That's here. True. So I believe this is the seven line project, right? Yes. Yes. Great group to join if you're looking for some time to spend. Again, they do an amazing job. They've got plenty of social media out there, ways to get involved. And they do stuff all year. And uh, a new member of the Seven Line team is Bigfoot, who was actually had a splash last night in the Randolph Parade. Oh, you're talking about Gus for a second. Gus right here, too. My man Mags driving on there. Fellow graduate. And there here he comes is. Bigfoot right there. Bigfoot's ready to go. He is real, Jeff. He is. He's announced his candidacy. If you're looking for an alternative in November, Bigfoot's running. We'll just let that simmer for a second. <laughs> I see a band coming up here, so that usually is uh, Bluestone Bank. We're going to see if I'm right. Start another, calling out our shots. Another great supporter of Fourth of July events and many events in our community every year. They do have two locations, one at uh, Scotland Park and one actually here in the Common, the uh, site of the first Bluestone Bank. Nice Obviously, it's undergone some name changes, but still, sure. that is the uh, first. Always known as Bridgewater Savings Bank to the locals. Still the same community feel. And they have their band right with them, as they do every year. We can barely walk and talk. They're walking and playing music. Very impressive. Very impressive. Speaking of businesses supporting the community, we have our Bridgewater Business Association following right behind. And if you do have a local business in town and you're looking to get your name out there, connect with fellow leaders and make some friends and some camaraderie, the Bridgewater Business Association at bridgewaterbiz.biz is a great place to do it. Also, uh, usually put together the Christmas on the Common they events. They do, uh, yes. Another great Autumn event Fest. Down here. Yes. Autumn Fest coming up the last Saturday in September over at the Bridgewater State Quad. And Bridgewater's Christmas on the Common, typically the first Sunday in December.
believe that's Ben Ellis driving the truck. Ben Ellis, always everybody's favorite tow driver right here in town. And how about the Plymouth County 4-H? It's exciting to see the 4-H still active, John. One of the great organizations, keep the kids busy in the summer and also doing some good things. And it makes the fairs and the festivals so much better too when they're still active. So that's great to see. I was looking online and they said that there's always something going on, which is really important, especially you know, in, in these days where, you know, it's uh, electronically driven society. And here we have the American Cancer Society of uh, Greater South Shore. They actually had the Relay for Life uh, a couple weeks ago. And coming up on July 20th, there's actually a special pickleball tournament at F45 Training South or F45 Training South Shore Boston is presenting it. The pickleball tournament on July 20th is from 11 to 2 at Pickles in Hanover. Uh, for more info on that event, follow F45 Training South Shore Boston on Facebook. They've made some great strides over the years for sure. And right behind them, Julie's Studio of Dance is finishing up their competition season. You see the competition team marching here today. They had a, another successful weekend of recitals here just recently. And enjoying their summer just take a break and we're very appreciative that they're here with us today and getting set for the uh, 20th year i believe hard to believe over 2,000 square feet of uh dance floor space a lot of friends and family in that group and they're having a ball Another one of our classic cars. And how about our Barbie car coming down today? It's been a big year for Barbie. We got any uh, Barbie music tonight? I think there's probably a few on there. All right. Certainly made some money for Dua Lipa this year, that's for sure. Mike's quality auto repair and fireworks circle here in Bridgewater. And behind them, our friends at the Bridgewater Senior Center and our CARES Transit van. Also co-sponsored by our good friend Tommy Arigi and a and &A Metro, great supporters of the community. Obviously, I have another job beside here at BTV, and uh, at that job, I see that van go back and forth carrying people to do their food shopping, which is always uh, important and good to see people helping out. How about Momentum Realty in our parade? If you're Dan Limro, who's a great friend of the community, and if you're looking to buy and sell, give him a call. Dan also runs some... 5K events in town, some fundraisers for the community throughout the year. A great community supporter. Looks like right behind him, we have our friends at Central Square, Congregational, and Hanson's Farm. Who's brought out their tractor. I'm guessing Hanson's might be a popular place for some ice cream today and tomorrow right into the weekend. Really good peanut butter Sunday there. That's true. I mean, there's really no such thing as bad ice cream. And right behind there, we have a former town councilor, selectman, BTV host, and now candidate for state representative, Dennis Gallagher, and Congressman Bill Keating walking right behind. We actually saw Congressman Keating, I believe, uh, here for the dam opening a couple months ago. It's been an exciting year in the town of Bridgewater, and I understand a lot more coming up here in the new year. And if you're looking for a colder beverage today, how about the Girls Brewery right here, based in Bridgewater? Owned and operated since 2022. Another success story for some local business. 
You can find out more on them, including a uh, cookbook that they have that involves cooking with beer. Visit thegirlsbrewery.com. How about it for Bridgewater Youth Soccer, always having a successful season and some of our all-star players here. The U-12 boys team took home the uh, white division crown in the 32nd annual Bridgewater Challenge Cup a couple weeks ago. And registration is open for pre-K through grade nine if you want to sign your child up for Recreation, Recreation League Soccer. It's open now through August 23rd at BridgewaterYouthSoccer.com. Challenge Cup annually brings teams in from across the region. Some teams from out of state they have been doing that for a long time. A lot of volunteers required to do that effort, and we appreciate them. So I see the black hat truck coming up. We're going to talk to someone in there, hopefully. I have to pick the right window. If not, it's going to be off or not. Black Hat, a big part in some of the festivals that we've actually had outside of our studio, thanks to uh, Fire for Effect Foundation, cleaning out all the trees and everything. Also the host of uh, Bridgewater Music Alley. Speaking of which, she'll be a part of two big events coming up in our parking lot here next weekend for folks watching if you're local. Both on July 13th and 14th, we'll have the Brew Fest at the BTV parking lot on July 13th and Country Fest on the 14th. So make sure you check that out. And I picked the wrong window because we have Paul from Black Hat right on the other side of the truck. Well, you, we can walk forward. We, we probably can, but it's on the other side. That's a very long trip. So I'm going to have Tony follow me, actually, for a second. We'll see if we can grab Paul from Black Cat. Very popular guy handing out freeze pops. Happy 4th of July, hey, sir. Hey, happy 4th of July, everybody. What's up, John? How are you? So we were talking about you're a big part of this community with the festivals you're holding at Black Cat Brew Works. Talk about what you have coming up. I know we got big day coming up on Saturday. Uh, we've got Brew Fest. South Shore Farmer Brewfest happening this Saturday from 12 to 5 down at 80 Spring Street. We've got Country Fest happening Sunday, July 14th from 12 to 6 with some amazing artists, food trucks, beer. It's going to be an amazing day. Not unlike today, which is my favorite day in Bridgewater every single year. All right. Have fun handing out those freeze pops. Happy 4th. So we got Country Fest and uh, Brew Fest coming up uh, next weekend. Saturday, July 13th is Brew Fest and Country Fest on July 14th. That's a Sunday. A lot of great things coming up in our parking lot. We have uh, a two-day music festival that's being planned out right now. I thought you went all the way with the Uncle Sam outfit. I mean, this Peter is Leonard's impressive. Has a beat. This is impressive right here. Our uh, Bridgewater Republican Town Committee. Great to see. How about? Washington. This is, to wish everyone this is a happy a fourth. <laughs> this is, I, I thought my costume was good, but this is impressive. Yeah, you don't have a key. Well, well done. <laughs> Peter Linares, BTV host and active community member. Appreciate having him here today. Sandra Wright coming out. Sandra Wright also our candidate for state representative this year and Sandra has always been active in the community. Shout out to some of our DJs here, fellow DJs in our parade today. We just mix in Cool Negane and Lizzo. That was very impressive. And DJ Rosie Rose. Do you know any DJs? I know a few. 
Rosie, of course, a longtime phys ed teacher at Southbrook School back in the day. DJ Rosie Rose, part of our Cash Strawn team, and we really appreciate all of them as well being here. Cash just finishing up chemotherapy, which is great to see. And here comes the Bridgewater Badgers truck, and I meant I was mentioning I talked to someone about the float making that turn. It was on this float, so looks like uh, they made the turn. They successfully made it down. Badgers, another banner season. Seems like they just have one championship after another every year and a great feeder program. I know a lot of other communities who are jealous that they don't have the program that the Badgers have and it really does make a difference right on up through the high school and college level. Saw one of the coaches, Justin Roberts, coming through, uh, owner of Champions Barber's Shop on Spring Street. Uh, ironically enough, a couple doors down from us. Well, that's a great point, John. You know, a lot of the coaches, staff, the assistants, all of the folks work in the snack shacks, and they're all volunteers. You know, they all give their time. They give many of their weekends. It's a, it's a great effort. It takes a lot, and I know these kids really appreciate it, and we appreciate them. I'm doing surveying here. I'm seeing lollipops, no Reese's. Though. We appreciate the lollipops. I see Reese's or cookies and cream Hershey's. I'm making the dive into the parade route. Did I see Paul passing out some freeze pops? That's that's a hit today. That's how you get the people on your side. That's true. <laughs> Did you have one? Was there anything in the freeze pops? Or uh, no, no, no. Okay, all right. Pretty good check. Our invisible heroes here coming across now. Appreciate having them every year. All part of many of our community events. They're also here with Christmas on the Common in December. And how about it for our district champion, Little League players here, District 7 champs. 8 to 10 and 9 to 11 year olds winning their District 7 championships. One of them actually came last night. So. Not a bad 24 hours. You win a championship, exactly. you march in the parade. March in the parade. There you go. Here comes the rest of the... Uh, Little league players here for Bridgewater. And they'll be and they play baseball right where we'll be in a few hours, Jeff, down at Legion true. Field. Absolutely. Keeping and, the fields active. And we have Clydesdales and as I called it, making the turn into Central Square. We just won't take that camera shot. Well, this is a great addition to the parade this year. Uh, Mia's stables. Featuring our Clydesdales. It's great to have them. Beautiful horses. And this is good preparation for a parade. They actually have someone in the street sweeping this all up. So clean up your mess. Lesson of the day. Lesson for tonight. Just That's true. Out there. Yes. Bring a small little bag with it with plenty of trash boxes. You know, that's an important point, Sean. We do have the support of the Bridgewater uh, House of Corrections, and they will be helping us out as they do every year, Department of Corrections, tomorrow morning. And uh, But again, any work that folks can do to help us out to keep our fields as clean as possible, we really do appreciate that. What a shiny new bus here from Lucini Transportation coming ahead. Well, that's not a bad bus to take a trip on, John. Especially on a warm, sticky day. Looks like it has some nice air conditioning in there. A few TVs, I'm guessing. Long time staple of the Bridgewater and West Bridgewater communities for many years. 
And I'm seeing Cert cross, which means I believe we have hit the conclusion of the parade. So I think it's safe to walk back out and I appreciate what we saw because, as you mentioned, this is uh, probably one of the larger parades we've had. Yeah, you know, it's been a great turnout, and uh, that's uh, it's a, you know, it's great to see. It's very uh, helpful for us, and it's great for the community, and just a great way to kick off the day. And now, folks will enjoy our arts festival. Some will go home, enjoy a little barbecue, and then come on down to Legion Field this afternoon. We mentioned earlier about the fundraising that goes into this, and we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up. A focal point of the of the fundraising efforts, and that's Barrett's uh, Ale House really coming through in a big way for you guys. Well, Mike Barrett reached out to us uh, early in the spring, you know, and he said he he really appreciated the community, and his words really were, you know, it's it's not fair that it's such a small group have to raise so much money for such a large event. But we really do enjoy it, and we we appreciate the help, and the Barrett's team's been amazing with us. They've given 20% of their proceeds every Monday from Patriots Day through just last week. And they also did a, a golf tournament for us, which raised you know, $7,000 in one day. So at the end of it, all so total, they brought in close to $20,000 for this event. And it's, just, it's been amazing. But again, you know, we want to thank all of the businesses, all of the supporters that have been a part of this and continue to be a part of it. As we mentioned, we'll have our event today, you know, and then planning for next year begins tomorrow. And so, you know, uh, we want to try to raise as much money as we can to have a starter account for next year's event to get the deposits down. And 100% of it, you know, goes to this event. So, I mean, that's great. And we hope to be able to do this as many years as we can. Thus be it ever, where free men shall stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land praise the power that has made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must, for our cause it is just, and this be our motto, in God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the fourth verse of the national anthem, the star-spangled banner. And now, what you are expecting. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. 
Game through through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the
Playing on your radio. 